Hey guys, so today I'm going to show you the five things you need to know to be able to fly for free in first class using points and miles. Four years ago, I learned how to fly for free and together with my wife, we've traveled over 39 different destinations all over the world. We've hit pretty much everywhere on our bucket list, from Thailand to Tokyo to Europe, and pretty much everywhere in between. Keep watching until the end of this video because I'm going to show you how you can book an $8,800 flight for just 76,000 miles. Hey guys, my name is Andrew Wise and I'm with Life Tailored and we talk about everything that makes your life great. Make sure to subscribe to our channel because I share all of our favorite credit card hacks and all of our exclusive offers we get just to subscribers. So today we're talking about how to master credit card points and fly the world for free. So to kick things off, I'm gonna talk about four mistakes people are making when it comes to credit cards. So the first mistake people make is when it comes to redeeming credit card points, they're often redeeming them for either cash back, travel, or worse yet, gift cards or redeeming it for merchandise. And the way it works is for every credit card system, each point is worth about a penny each. And when you redeem those points for a penny each, the credit card systems and the credit card companies are really happy because that means they're winning and you're losing. What we wanna do is redeem our credit card points by transferring them to airline partners and that's where we can get two cents, three cents, four cents, five cents, and sometimes even nine cents per credit card point. I used to spend a ton of time when I was first getting into this, getting as many points as I could and then redeeming them for cash back. What I realized is I was spending hours and hours and hours of my time just for a small penny per point. And what I should be doing is spending my time either working on my business, recording more videos, busting my butt at my job, and making more money because I don't know about you, but my hourly rate is definitely over 10 bucks an hour and putting in all that time just to get some measly cash back wasn't worth it. What I found out is if I can get nine cents per point using it for travel, that's gonna be the highest and best use of my time. So that's when I decided I'm gonna figure out how I can hack the system and fly for free using credit card points. So the second mistake people make is they just sign up for whatever their favorite airline is and get that airline credit card. So there's a couple problems with this. The first is you're only earning points when you're spending money on that airline. So if we get the Delta credit card and fly Delta, great, we're getting two or three times points whenever we fly on Delta. The thing is if we book a flight on American Airlines, we're not getting any bonus points there. The other problem is these domestic carriers like American, Delta, United, their programs are really stingy. So as an example, if I was gonna fly business class from here to Europe on Delta's Delta One product, it's about 225,000 miles one way. Now, if we actually use Virgin Atlantic, we can fly that same sort of cabin for around 100,000 miles. We're getting more than double the amount of points by having flexibility in our points and being able to transfer to other partners. And this kind of leads us into our, the third mistake people are making, is they're not diversifying their points enough. The same reason you don't want to have an airline card that just works with that airline, you don't want to have a credit card that locks you into a specific set of transfer partners. So if you sign up for a Chase card, Chase Ultimate Rewards is about 14 amazing transfer partners. But the thing is, they don't have select partners that American Express has or that Marriott Bonvoy has. So it's really important when you're assembling your credit card strategy is you have a card from each different issuer so that when you're booking your flight from here to Australia and you find out you need to fly on JAL or you know a random New Zealand carrier, you have the points available that you can transfer from your mileage pools to those different airlines. And the fourth mistake that people make, and this is a mistake that I personally make, is any miles you have in your bank in your airline bank are worthless. I've got about 2.5 million miles sitting in my accounts and they are completely worthless. Every mile only has value when you book a flight. The thing is, these airlines are getting more and more stingy. Every quarter we're seeing new devaluations where a flight used to cost 100,000 miles, now it's 115,000 miles. So if you have points you're accumulating for that big flight, make sure to book the flight now to lock in the savings before things start devaluing. Now let's talk about how to get the most value for our points and talk about how much our points actually worth. So if you're looking at a typical card like the Barclay Arrival card, they give you one cent per point and each of these points are redeemable for travel. So the way it works is if you book a thousand dollar flight and you have a hundred thousand Barclay points, you can offset that purchase. That's one cent per mile, that's the baseline level of how much points are worth. If you're looking at any scenario of booking a flight, and the way I do this is I look at, say a flight costs $1,000 and it's 50,000 miles to redeem for that flight. That gives you 1,000 divided by 50,000, that's two cents per mile. And basically that's a function I use to determine if it's a good deal and should I use points and miles for this flight. If a flight costs me $1,000, 
and it's redeemable for 100,000 miles, that means I'm getting one cent per point, which means I should use the Barclay arrival card or some sort of direct cash back card that offsets for travel. Now, if a flight is costing $1,000, but it's only bookable for 50,000 points, I'm getting two cents per mile. So if I'm looking at a flight that costs $2,000, but it's bookable for 50,000 miles, I'm getting four cents per point. And this is where the function really comes in. If I can get redemption above two cents, then it's worth using points and miles and transferring over. If it's less than two cents, then it's worth using that direct spend cash back card. And that's essentially the formula you wanna to apply to any flights you're looking at. Now you're gonna to have to learn what are the best ways to redeem your points and miles. How do you do transfer partners, all that sort of stuff. I'm gonna talk about that soon, but this is the formula you have to keep in your head. Whenever you're doing the math, just type in the price of the flight divided by the number of miles and do that function. Is it over two, is it under two? And then you know your determination. So now let's talk about how do we actually get points? So when airline miles were first invented, the main way of getting airline miles was to actually fly. For every mile you flew, you got one point. This all started to change about 15 years ago when airlines were giving away promo offers and offering points for purchasing random sort of stuff. You may have heard about this famous story where a guy bought enough pudding so that he can get 1.2 million miles with American Airlines. So that he could get over 1.2 million miles just for buying pudding. This was a fantastic deal and a number of other people got in on this, but basically that was the first way to get a ton of points and miles is to buy just random stuff. Remember people were buying um, little gold coins using a credit card and you, if you bought the coins and turned them in at the bank, it was basically free money. So there are all sorts of little life hacks, credit hacks that were going on in the past 10, 15 years. But pretty much now, the main way to get points and miles is with credit cards. So there's two ways to get points and miles with credit cards. The first is a sign up bonus. So this is gonna be the easiest way to get a big bulk of points. There have been credit card bonuses range from maybe 50,000 all the way up to 100,000. And these bonuses, while they're fantastic, only come about once per lifetime of the card. So when you're looking at assembling your credit card strategy, say you're planning a flight to Europe and you need 300,000 miles, you could say, okay, well, if I apply for six cards and they're getting 50,000 miles each between me and my wife, that's three cards. And then we get our sign up bonus, we take that flight and then, then what do we do? And then we're done. But the thing is credit card sign up bonuses run out. And that's where you have to figure out how you can get points using credit card spend. When we're talking about credit card spend, different credit cards have different bonuses for diff different categories. There is a new Chase Freedom card, which gives you 3x points on everything you buy, which is a great way to get bonus points. There's another card that gives you 5x points for flights. There's another card that gives you 10x points for hotels. So depending on how you spend your money and where you can allocate your spend, using these credit card bonus categories is a great way to keep racking up points so you can keep flying for free. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is show you how to book a first class flight for free using points. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna log into our Chase Ultimate Rewards platform. And in this platform, I've got all of my different Chase cards. I've got the Chase Sapphire Reserve, I've got, or I used to have the Chase Sapphire Preferred, Chase Inc. Unlimited, I've got the Chase Inc. Bold. I've got all these different cards that go to all these different spending categories. But the main thing you need to know is we're gonna log in the Chase Ultimate Rewards and then we're gonna transfer our points to Singapore Airlines. So the way you do this is first you create an account at Singapore Airlines, get your Chris Flyer number, put that Chris Flyer number into the Chase Ultimate Rewards platform, type in the amount of miles we wanna transfer, link the accounts and then transfer the points. So for this redemption, I'm gonna be transferring 76,000 points from Chase over to Chris Flyer. Once I start this transaction, it's gonna take anywhere from 24 to 48 hours. Sometimes it takes 30 minutes. What you need to do is you transfer the points over to Chris Flyer. Then once you're in Chris Flyer, we're gonna look up the flight we want. Now in terms of timing, what you wanna do actually is go on Chris Flyer, find the flight you want, and then transfer the points. But in this example, we're walking it through step by step by step. Okay. So once we're in Chris Flyer, we've got our 76,000 miles, we're gonna be looking at a JFK to Frankfurt flight. So when we get to their website, we put in our origin, put in our destination, say we wanna redeem using points, and then search for the flight. Now as far as availability, the way to get the best redemption is you need to be very flexible with your dates. So the typical best availability is one to two weeks from the date you're flying. We are going to Europe in less than 30 days. So there should be pretty good availability right now for us to book our flights. This was kind of a big change for us because before we used to book flights six or seven or eight months in advance. But thanks to points, we, it doesn't matter how much the flight costs, 
since a fixed number of miles is always going to be the case. So now that we've got our date range and Singapore Airlines, let's just look for the flight. It's going to give us the best redemption. So the best redemption on Singapore Airlines is known as Save. So that's where they discount the rate the most you can get. And for this particular flight in Singapore Suites class, it's only 76,000 miles. So essentially what we do is we keep clicking next day, previous day, until we find that availability. Now, once we find this availability, we're gonna click book the flight, follow the instructions, pay the taxes and fees, and we're all set. Now, Singapore Airlines does have some hefty fees on here, but compared to an $8,800 flight, I'm happy paying you know 300 bucks in taxes and fees to be able to save $8,500. So as far as this goes, there are a ton of different airlines out there, a ton of different airline transfer partners, but this is the same basic steps you're gonna do for every single flight you're gonna take. You're gonna transfer from Chase or American Express or Capital One to the airline you wanna go to. In that airline, you look for the flight with the best redemption, you book the flight, and you're done. This is a process you're gonna learn over time. I have a ton of extra videos that's gonna walk you through booking a ton of different destinations, variations, airlines, etc. Make sure to check that right here, or actually right here. But this kind of gives you an overview of what it looks like to book that $8,800 flight for just 76,000 miles. Okay, so now you kind of understand the basics of credit cards and how you can fly for free using points and miles. So let's talk about what are the best credit cards to get you started. So when I was first getting started, I got the Chase Freedom Card. So the Chase Freedom Card offered 5X in different bonus categories each quarter. I was in college and I had a ton of time on my hands and I could focus on finding each of these different bonus categories and spending the max amount for those categories. I've since moved on from that where I'm not as meticulous and and to me, my favorite new uh, starter card is the Chase Freedom Unlimited. So this card, instead of having different bonus categories, it gives you 3x bonus on everything you spend for the first 20k in the first year. So if you're like me and you just want to rack up points as quickly as possible and not see if Dwayne Reed is considered the drugstore or a gas station or whatever, or a grocery store or whatever it may be, and just want that flat bonus category, then check out the Chase Freedom Unlimited card. It has no annual fee, pretty much anyone can get approved, even if you have good to okay credit, and it's especially geared for college students. Now, if you already have the Chase Freedom card or you already have a basic sort of cashback or rewards card, the next card I'd recommend is the Chase Sapphire Preferred. So this card came out about 10 years ago. I've got a review right here going into the details of it, but basically it earns 2x points on travel and dining and has just a $95 annual fee. So if you are an everyday person and not doing a ton of traveling, but you wanna maximize sign up bonuses as well as daily spend, this card is an excellent addition to your um, credit card arsenal. Now, if you wanna up that level and you already have a pretty lengthy credit history, I love the Chase Sapphire Reserve. So this gets 3X points on travel and dining and it gets a $300 travel credit. It does come with a $450 annual fee or maybe it's 495, but either way, it's offset by the fact you get $100 off TSA PreCheck slash Global Entry. So for the first year, your annual fee is just sitting at about 50 bucks. So it's a tremendous value. Now this card is not for the faint of heart. It's got that giant annual fee, and it's only for people who are spending over about $2,000 a year on travel and dining. Another great runner-up card if you're doing a ton of traveling is the Amex Platinum card. This gets 5X points on every flight you book, and it also gets you into a ton of different airline lounges. It gets you into the Centurion Lounge at LaGuardia, Miami, Vegas, San Francisco. They're amazing lounges, it's completely free. But again, these cards have giant $500 annual fees. So now I'm gonna turn it over to you guys. Having learned all this, which credit card do you have your eye on? Are you checking out the Chase Freedom Unlimited, the Chase Sapphire Preferred, the Chase Sapphire Reserve, or possibly the Amex Platinum? Let me know down in the comments. I reply to every single comment, and I'm here to help you guys out, figure out which is the best card for you. So now that you've just got your initial kick into credit card points, I want you guys to check out this playlist I have right up here. It goes into all the different credit card sign-up bonuses and what are the best offers for 2019. This is really going to help you kickstart those travel plans and really achieve those bucket list goals you guys have. And before you go, make sure to subscribe to the channel so you never miss any of your credit card hacks and all of the exclusive new sign-up bonuses I share with subscribers first. All right, see you guys every Monday for the next video.